The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Surely to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, in this unique dispensation of the church age, how great is a privilege for a believer, a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to easily reach the status of maximum glorification of Christ. Though being given to us the polytheism of privileges, though being called as Togo Varalis and called as an adult son in Christ, and not only this, furthermore, even called to the praise of his glory in his grace, bestowing in upon us the permanency of indwelling ministry of the invisible power of the Trinity. And not only that, given being given for us into the reality of the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in order to train us up when we have been controlled of the Spirit by using rebound. To control of the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when we have been absolutely granting the permission to use rebound. And what a great reality it would be for us in a day-by-day -day process that we need to take. That you are not like that Old Testament saints, or the Hebrews, or the Israelites, who were learned some sort of a sect, a sect of ritual code, the Haldaic exegesis, Halaic exegesis, and the trends toward that Machilta which they have written. And thinking that they are doing great work to Jehovah, all those ritualistic things have been thrown out in this church age. The church age is a period of Bible doctrine. The church age is a period of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The church age is a period wherein you will be convicted, Alenko in the Greek, to expose the true character of Satan getting in the light. Satan, I call it as a main head. Through it, the various apostasies, various cults, various religions, various denominations, though Bible has been subjected to one interpretation in the original language of the scriptures, the modesty of a man should tell if he's really born to one parent. Bible is infallible and inerrant. The errancy has been in us to understand it properly. And how can you understand it if you're not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit? Like Zachariah, you want to claim the claims? No. He is still a dichotomous in nature. He never knows what is the spiritual content of the Bible. But what are we? We are in Christ now. We need to be born again. We need to be understanding that spiritual phenomena demands our human spirit gets activated. And that's no way possible until unless you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And since Zachariah doesn't believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, never he will come to know the reality of the truth. That's why, like a man who doesn't have any understanding, a foolish man who utters all his mouth, he is going on to claim those things which the Bible denies long back. A fool saith in his heart that there is no God. That's what it quotes to him. The same quote is applicable today as well to the many so-called theologians, the many so-called denominational leaders. And the principle of reality wherewith they have been called because of ignorance of the true mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Because Lord God, the Holy Spirit uses only one thing, dispensations. If it were not so, Apostle Paul would have been penned there, the term as dispensations in Ephesians 3.2. Iconomas in the Greek. And they want to tell the economia, the management of the home, the management of the superior one. Yes, absolutely, you're right. Administration's right. 
and we have been here called to manage the things pertaining to the church age as number one because of its uniqueness. Never in the past, never in the future will be given the permanence of the unwilling ministry of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, followed by the Trinity, to make the Shekinah in you. And when he's managing, he knows very well what to give, number one priority, and what not to give. And why uses the term dispensations for you? Because to divide the word of the Lord between the Israel and the church, to divide the terms between the Israel and the church, further leading into the millennium as well. And not only this, Lord God, the Holy Spirit uses the second word, exegiomai, exegesis. When Apostle John was writing in his Gospel of John 1.18, he tells, No man has seen God. The words which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ told is getting to our remembrance again there and is writing there once again and tells through John, exegiomai, exegesis, the origin of the word. But the one who has come from the bosom is going to expound it to you, explain to you what is the process? Exegesis. And what is the true definition of exegesis? To lead out. To cause you to be inculcated. And what is the thing that is going to make you through inculcation, emotion, your gibberish languages that you speak around, your miracles or healings, and one more on pastor, he wants to tell what is the hour of the need today in today's Christendom. It's healing. He wants to be get cured of his diseases. They want to get rid of their bondages. And I told them, first get rid of the bondage of your old sin nature, which is controlling you not to give number one priority for Bible doctrine. Until and unless there is an entrance of light, there is no way of darkness from your life. No matter how many torches, how many substitutory lamps you want to keep when the power is cut. In the darkness of the day, when the hour is going long, till there is a life in that cell, till there is a life in that candle, it goes on. But when it is gone, it is gone. Can it replace the real power? It cannot. The real power is not possible to be replaced. When the real power comes, you will realize the reality. What is the worth of that real power? Because you were keeping candles. You were keeping some substitutory battery recharges. But that is temporary, right? Exactly all these miracles or healings wherewith you are working out is also temporary. Simply to remove the elevation of your suffering, which is nowhere designed by Lord God the Father. And it has been done by them so that the unbelievers can believe in Christ. It is not for the believers. If there is any miracle of healing today, the first miracle of healing should be the entrance of the word. The entrance of thy word gives the light, gives the deliverance. It's upon your thinking that goes. That's why your mind should be like the mind of Christ. Your attitude like the Christ. So how you will get that thinking? By emotionally jumping, dancing? No. You will get that thinking provided you take Bible doctrine. The advantage for these Gentile believers who believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is that they are aliens to the rituals of the Old Testament Israelite practices. And now when they belong to the church, they are having advantage. As such, in the Old Testament, they used to have only endowment, but they have now the permanence of the unwilling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which can thoroughly inculcate for them the importance of Bible doctrine, teach them the truth, elenco, expose, and get the true character of the truth. A greater our failure to expose the true character of this old sin nature which is being controlled by Satan, that is what I can call the exposing the character of Satan. The true character of Satan which has been blinding them to go for metaschematizoa, but not metamorphomai, which is not at all from the inner light, which is not at all from the intrinsic nature. And rather concentrating to tell upon them 
to the reality that you are transformed, you are transformed. No. If there is no real transformation from the inner, inner attitude, from the inner mind, from the inner thoughts, from the inner intrinsic nature, from the root of your very all sin nature, totally suppressed by the mental ministry of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, because when it energizes your activated human spirit, this activated human spirit in return controls your soul. And every thought being brought into captivity for Christ, the old sin nature gets frustrated. It no longer doesn't have any sovereign power over you because of the 40 absolutes done to you at the moment of salvation. And for that, 39 plus 1, written by Lewis Perry Chaffer, re-edited by Robert Bunker Thieme, for you to get that information, what are those 40 absolutes? In that 39 irrevocable, which are permanent. And one, revocable, because whenever you sin, you lose it. There is nothing but the filling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to get it back when you use rebound in the privacy of your priesthood. So this 39 plus 1 equal to 40 absolutes given to you. Among that one, the old sin nature has lost the sovereign will and power over you. But it is you because of your temptation, because of your sin, which you want to go obey, which you doesn't want to obey the word of the Lord. Because John 14, 15 tells you, if you love me, obey. The principle with love goes with obey. The principle have to come to love has to go from faith. That's why Apostle Paul was great in 1 Corinthians 13, 13 when he tells faith, hope, and charity that is love. Faith in the word of the Lord. Hope, absolute confidence because when we obey, we are going to get it. Plus charity, what is that love? And if there is love, there is obey. And greater our failure to be obeyed that meant to say, greater is our failure to love that Lord. So among these three, what love? What, 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 which one is greater? Love is greater. Charity is greater. The KJV translation will cause many people. Charity means to feel some of the things donating to the poor people or who are orphan. No. Charity means love. That was a word used in 400 years back and that stands good at that time. And now it, has been, it should be termed out as love, agape. And the greater our failure to obey the word of the Lord, greater will be our failure to show forth the true love towards Jehovah. And therefore, dear brethren, you and I as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ have to be made known a point of thorough inculcation in the truth, which has been thoroughly ignored, which has been thoroughly made known not to have number one priority towards him. And furthermore, we have been given this great privilege, this great privilege of permanence of indwelling of the ministry, not to grieve, not to squelch, not to lie, but rather be controlled of the spirit and live a life that is worthy unto his glory. And which way you want to go, you decide. Because the greater work, the greater responsibility upon our shoulders which has been given is to thoroughly inculcate into the procedure of Bible the action, dear brethren. The great the failure on this earth, great the failure to love the Lord. So which way we want to go, we decide, we shall continue with the next day. Father, grateful for the privilege that I was going to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord, for we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.